um, um, my background is in holistic wellness, but as well as, as, and I also studied international health policy. So I have kind of a mixed background like that. And I always, um, this, these webinars were started when the crisis started, when the, when the pandemic started and we were kind of locked in our houses. So I wanted to bring in the specialists and partners and, and, and wonderful wellness practitioners that, are, that I already knew either because I've worked with them or because, you know, they were, um, I've come across, they, they, I, you know, I was lucky to meet them on my path uh, to bring them and, and to teach us, a, you know, a small, because in an hour we can't learn everything, but at least like a small part of their practice and uh, a technique or knowledge that can really help us through this difficult time uh, to help us reconnect body, mind, and spirit. That's kind of the whole concept of these webinars. So I'm really happy to have uh, Philippa Wilkin with us today from England, all the way from there. And I'm sure some people are, we have my mom from the US over there, I can see. And a lot of the people I don't really even know. So that means that we're having people from around the world, around the globe. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, it's really exciting to have all of you here. And uh, Philippa, I'm going to uh, just very briefly introduce you, but I think you'll do a much better job. Uh, she is an incredible breathwork facilitator, and you will learn about what that is, but it's a pretty magical, you know, <laughs> uh, skill that she taught me. She's taught many people. I've seen it kind of in action, and it really uh, is a superpower that gives us this really like vitality, health, energy, and a peace of mind that we so need in the, you know, in the, in the, always, but especially now. Uh, she's also a transformational leadership coach. So, and she, uh, she writes, so you should follow her page. I will, I will leave you with her page later so you can follow her. She's very inspirational. Uh, welcome. I'm going to pass the stage to you, microphone to you, <laughs> so, so you can take over and teach us some of this magic. How are you? I'm, I'm muted. Is that right? Yeah, now I can hear you. You can yeah. hear me? Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you for this invitation, Bella. I just want to say that. Um, it's been a long, it's been, it feels like a, a hot minute and also a long time since we met um, <laughs> those few years ago. And, and as you say, a lot has happened in that space of time in between. And a lot has certainly happened in the last few months, right? Um, internationally globally so I'm excited to be here and seeing all these amazing faces from all over the world um, and yeah I'm here from England so it's uh, it's actually night time here it's nine o'clock in the evening not too far from my bedtime but I'm really excited to spend the next bit of time with you to share something that's really changed my life um, and I just want to say if anybody if there are any Brazilians in here uh, boa noite a todos, <laughs> bem <-vindos. laughs> um, I speak a little bit of Portuguese, but I'm very rusty right now. So that's probably all the Portuguese that you'll get from me right now. But um, I would love to, what I'm going to do, um, if this works with everybody, is I'll just give a bit of an introduction as to who on earth I am, who's this crazy English lady that's going to talk us through something that we do day in day out right breathing is something that we do naturally i'm going to talk a little bit about um, how the breath can actually help us in terms of managing our stress response in terms of giving us more energy in terms of helping us relax all of those good things and then like anything worth learning in my personal experience this is about also having an experience so I'm going to, I'm going to run you through, we're going to do some breathing exercises together um, so that you can get a flavor of what this actually means, the potential for using your breath in your day to day life. Because when people ask me what breath work is, I often say, what does an apple taste like? Right. And I can tell you it's sweet, it's juicy, it's crunchy. It's, you know, all of these textures, but that's great but you're not going to know what the apple tastes like until you eat the apple, right? So we're going to do some of the eating of the apple. You can have an experience for yourself. And that for me is the best way of teaching. It's really helping people to understand their physiology 
And even in just a couple of minutes, how much difference we can make when we actually focus on a specific outcome. So if that's all great with you guys, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I think just to add, I, I think that's, that's one of the best values that we can get in this one hour, right? If you can teach us something that we can actually practice, you know, in the, yeah. in the confinement of our home or wherever it is that we are, that's, that's wonderful. So thank you for that. Yeah. Let's, mm -hmm. yeah, let's welcome. learn it. That's why I love this work, you know, it's so accessible. Some of the work I do is deeper and I'll talk a little bit about that, but that's, the, that's what I want to run you guys through. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end to share um, if you have any questions, anything like that, you want to know more. I just want to check in with everybody as well in terms of, maybe you can put in the chat box. I see there's some, looks like there's some tropical locations uh, <laughs> on here. So I'd love to know where you all are, particularly Ronan. He looks like he's having fun on the beach. I'm guessing that might be a cheat, Ronan. Background, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to hear from you in the chat. Just where, where are you? Um, I'm in Germany. You're in Germany. Okay, mm. great. Anybody else? Drop in the chat where you are. Let us know. Belgium. Oh, this is awesome. I, lo I love to see this because it just gives us a real flavor of how, of how international we are. Belgium, but currently- Morocco, Morocco. Rio de Janeiro, yay, Brazil, Germany, Switzerland, Rio. This is so cool. San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. Yeah. Colombia, oh my goodness. Spain, look at that. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> we are literally international. Poland. Look at that. Ireland, Amazing. based in Ireland. Wow, this is so cool, guys. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Greenish That's... based in Qatar, right? This is like the, <laughs> this feels like the expat community right here, right? <laughs> I know, that's what I most miss, but you know, in living in Rio. So this is amazing. This is a great opportunity for us to reconnect on an international level too, not just on yeah. a wellness level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's so nice. So thank you everybody for sharing that. So. And feel free if you've just joined, let us know where you're from. Um, and we'll just we'll just run on. So are we live on Facebook? Oh, we're live on Facebook too. So hello anybody on Facebook. If you want to come and join us live, you can jump on the Zoom call. Um, Hi, Mark Zuckerberg. Hey. Oh, I said hi Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> hi, from yeah. Facebook. Hi Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, thank you for this platform, right? That we can reach so many people. Um, there are blessings and curses of technology, um, but certainly in, in these times, it's a really valuable, valuable tool to be able to connect internationally and even just nationally and with our families. So thank you, technology. Right, so yeah, just a little bit of my background. Um, I've been working with breath work for, um, and, it, and actually just before we start, if anybody's, I presume everybody's English on here is really good. However, if there's anything that you don't understand, um, just either raise your hand or just drop something in the comments and say, could you repeat or could you, uh, could you say a little bit more? Because I'm aware my English is also quite fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, please, please feel free just to ask questions and don't feel like you have to keep up. So. Yeah, my background, I have been working in uh, the breathwork space and I'll talk a little bit about what breathwork is. Um, for getting on the last six years now, I discovered breathwork six years ago. I have been working with my own personal development probably for around 10 years. And that was catalyzed by a life crisis. So I had an amazing life, or I thought it was an amazing life, and then all of a sudden it uh, exploded, like they sometimes do. And I had a bit of a personal crisis. And so working on myself, I had more answers, I had more questions, sorry, than answers. And that led me to get very curious about different healing modalities, and the breath was one of them that I found six years ago. And so before that, before I went on my path of breath work, I was actually working in corporate. I worked in London. I had a, a job in an insurance company, a very successful one. I ran a multi-million pound portfolio. I wore a suit, all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I might look very casual now and work in the 
therapy field, but before that I was, um, yeah, I was a city high flyer. <laughs> kind of funny to think. So I understand, I guess, different aspects of life and high pressure corporate environments as well as the therapeutic space. And how I met Bella, actually, when I also found breathwork, I decided that I needed to quit my corporate career. And part of that decision was I needed to move to Brazil. And so I quit all my corporate life and I moved to Brazil in 2000. Uh, I was on and off in Brazil from 2015. And learning breathwork along the way. And breathwork for me was really a tool for me personally to, uh, to resolve some things. And it led on to now a career. That wasn't the plan. I just did it for me. And like anything I think that comes good, we do something because it's for us and then we really get the benefit from it and we feel cool to share it with other people, right? So that's, that's really why I'm here. And just to explain a little bit about my perception of what breath work is, and this is kind of a quite commonly held view. I'm just, I'm just gonna put a light on here because I'm getting a bit dark. That's better, hopefully you can see me a bit better. Um, so breath work, breathing, breathing, it's something that we do every day, hopefully, right? Fingers crossed. <laughs> and <laughs> it's the thing that we don't think about at all. But actually, logically, if we think we can't really go that long without water, we can go longer without food, but we can't go more than any, more than a few minutes without our breath, without breathing because it's game over. And it's the first thing we do when we come into the world, and it's the last thing we do before we go out. And yet, because it's an automatic function, very few of us pay much conscious attention to what is happening with our breathing. However, in our autonomic nervous system, these things that are happening automatically, you know, our food digests, automatically, our liver cleanses our blood, our kidneys filter things out of our system, our heart beats. All of these things are happening without, without us thinking to do them, right? To make them happen. Our breathing is also happening automatically, but it is one of the main functions in our body that we can then start to actually change. We can breathe deeper, we can breathe shallower. So we actually have control over this one specific system. And what that means is it's actually really, it's a really, really good thing for us. And I'll go on to explain a little bit of why that is from a physiological point of view. But I just wanna give you a flavor of what my perception of breath work is as well. It's kind of like breath work. What is this thing called breath work? Really, there are two, two parts. One is be, just being aware of our breathing. So similar to what Bella was saying when she was doing the introduction, a big part of the yoga practice is breath awareness. Just having this awareness that the breath is coming and going. And perhaps we do some uh, changes to the breath, but for the most part, we're, this is an awareness practice of how we are breathing. Because often we don't, pay that much attention to it. So you could think of that as almost like a mindfulness practice, a meditation practice where we're just paying attention. The other part of breath work is about consciously changing or modulating how we breathe. So we're either breathing in for longer or breathing um, out for longer, holding our breath and changing how we breathe. So this is the conscious modulation or the conscious changing of our breathing patterns and our breathing behavior that can elicit different states. So we can control, uh, we can cause a relaxation response in our body by how we breathe. And we can also, by a different way of breathing, we can energize our body. And we can create a whole host of things in between that, depending on how we choose to breathe. And this for me is really where the magic, so to speak, is, because the breath is a bit like magic. Um, we get to 
through that process actually start to regulate learn how to regulate our nervous system and our responses to the environment and the responses to our thoughts and i think you'll all agree with me right now that that might be a little bit important given that we can't control what's happening out in the world right we can't change everything that's happening right now the two things that i believe that we do have control of um, in some sense are how our attitude so how we view the world how we respond to life how we perceive what is happening around us right are the goggles the glasses that we wear we choose how we can look out in the world and the other thing is really the actions that we take as a result of that so even though we might feel perhaps a little bit trapped or a little bit stifled or frustrated or scared or whatever is going on there are certain things that we do actually have control over and so in addition to that one of those things is our breath is our breathing and our ability to regulate our nervous system is this making sense because i recognize i can talk a lot <laughs> i can just talk and talk and talk <laughs> um okay awesome super so going another level deeper so we we can change how we breathe and this is going to affect not only our, our physiology physiology like our the, the, the body chemistry it's also going to change our mindset it's going to change how we feel up here it's going to change how we think so when we take a step down from that and we go in a little bit more detail the way i describe it is that we have an accelerator pedal it's like driving a car we have the accelerator we have the gas pedal and we have the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal is what's called our sympathetic nervous system my calendar keeps reminding me to go to bed to go to bed and do breath work it's kind of funny it's just popping up in the corner so <laughs> i won't do that just yet um, so we have our accelerator pedal and our brake pedal and so the accelerator pedal is what is related right is our sympathetic nervous system you guys heard this term before most people have heard this term yeah, yeah. And, our, and our sympathetic nervous system in simple terms is our fight and flight response so way back when we were way more uncivilized than we are these days if we got chased by a tiger if some some wild animal was you know coming to eat us uh, our sympathetic nervous system would kick in and give us the energy to either run away or to stand and fight right so this is the state where we get a fright okay you know you're watching a scary movie and the <gasps> something jumps out at you you know this fright which we can often feel in our body maybe a bit of panic might be raised heart rate might be raised blood pressure uh, feeling a bit hot and sweaty right agitation because our energy is mobilizing so that we can actually move our adrenaline goes up our hormone you know all of our kind of um stress hormones go up cortisol adrenaline all of that rises so that our body can move and respond to a threat now this is very very helpful if you're being chased by a tiger i don't know anybody did anybody get chased by a tiger recently <laughs> no but i did get chased by the wasps recently so <laughs> okay i can say that was very helpful but it's you know it's only helpful and for a couple of minutes there <laughs> right so hopefully none of you got chased by a tiger i hope that's never going to happen to you in your life however the tiger now is replaced by uh what's happening in the media uh what's happening in your home potentially it's the boss's email it's the deadlines it's the disgruntled clients whatever stress or pressure that is coming and that's either external and internal it could be you know having your kids at home all of these things right, are potentially creating a stress response and our accelerator our gas pedal is getting pressed all of the time now it's okay if that if that pedal is getting pressed momentarily and then the you know 
then we're easing off. But modern life is often jamming on the accelerator, right? Jamming on the stress response. And what happens when, that, when we do that over time is we come to burnout. We come to, um, you know, chronic stress, fatigue, burnout. It's almost like the, the level is up here for so long that the body can only sustain it for a period of time before we fall off the cliff, right? The magic of breath is that our inhalation, when we breathe in, what's that in Portuguese? Inhalação, yeah, is that right? Inhalação, uh -huh. inhalação. When we breathe in, inspira. <laughs> when we inspira, when we breathe in, this is related to this part of our nervous system. This is related to our gas pedal. The good news is, on the other side, our exhale, when we breathe out, solta, I think it is. Expira. Expira or solta, like let go. Solto a. Right. Solto a. Um, when we exhale, this is triggering a different system, the opposite system. And this is the parasympathetic nervous system. So this is, you know, this is Science 101. Some of you guys, you, might, you may already be familiar with what I'm talking about here, but it's always good to have a reminder that this is right under our nose, right? This really is right under our nose and we need reminding, including myself. That's why I teach this stuff, <laughs> that our breath really is a superpower. So our parasympathetic system is like the brake, it's like putting on the brake pedal of the car. And it is referred to as our rest and digest response. So when we've had like a nice meal and then we're laying on the sofa and we're all relaxed or we're in connection with somebody else, this is um, the, the relaxation response, okay? And ideally in life, we want a balance of these things because our, our sympathetic system isn't bad. Uh, it's actually, we're always in balance with these things. For example, if we go for a run, we do some physical activity, we are utilizing our, our sympathetic nervous system. It's just when we get out of balance and we've got that pedal jammed on all the time, this is when it causes us a problem and actually affects negatively our immune response. So by working consciously with how we breathe, we can actually bring ourselves into balance and balance our immune response. So that if necessary, we can respond to a threat, right? We can press the, press the gas pedal if we need to. But equally, we can press the brake pedal. And if you notice when you breathe in and you breathe out, generally speaking, these are balanced, right? We're always seeking this kind of balance and adaptivity and flexibility. Does this make sense? Cool, good. So, <clears throat> the other thing, just from a, what else happens with the breath? So our emotions and our breathing are related. Not only we have, when we have our sympathetic nervous system activated more, when we're in perhaps a state of feeling of, which can be like a feeling of panic and anxiety as well. So if you get panic and anxiety, it can be related to this sympathetic response. We are also breathing often in our chest. When we are breathing with our chest muscles and our shoulder muscles, we're not utilizing the ideal muscle for breathing, which is our diaphragm. And so our diaphragm sits, I'll just get up so you can see, here's my ribs. Diaphragm sits under the ribs like this. And when I breathe in, it does this. And when I breathe out, it does that. So when I breathe in, it does that, and then breathe out, it does that. So when we breathe in, and when we breathe in, as the diaphragm comes down, it also displaces anything that's in our belly. So proper breathing looks more like breathing like a Buddha than it does having a six pack. And so we've trained ourselves um, quite a dysfunctional breathing manner because breathing is a behavior. The majority of us are not breathing with our diaphragm, which means our abdomen moves. And I say this in, in Portuguese, it's uh, 
a, a maioria das pessoas que fica como um, tanquinho. Tanquinho? Is that right? Like with a, with a six pack. Everybody wants to have like yeah. a six pack and a flat stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be buff, you know? Um, <laughs> That's that, you know, it's yeah, funny we, you mentioned that. I, I, I have to interrupt you there. I'm sorry, but it's like it, um, I, I have a personal story about that one. You know, I, I used to sing a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm a singer, too, on, on the side, so to speak. And, you know, when you sing, you definitely you have to breathe with your, uh, you know, with your abdomen. There's no way around it. Right. But I, yeah. I, I quit singing when I joined, like, and I decided to, uh, you know, career and, you know, international relations. Singing was just like I didn't have time for it. And my health started deteriorating, but I didn't make a connection. My digestion was like terrible during that time. And I didn't make the connection until when I started singing again. And I was like, wait, is there, could there potentially be a connection? And sure enough, my breathing, you know, was totally shallow when I was having all those health problems. And then all of a sudden I started singing, it went back to the, you know, to the deep belly breathing. Right. And that's just, Miracle, you know, I, I, I only discovered it once I discovered about, you know, that the power of breathing, but I didn't make that connection before. So, yeah. 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 Really, really good point. Really, really common that um, <clears throat> we're not utilizing this muscle. And that also means that often we get uh, stress in our shoulders and our neck, especially if we're on the computer and things like that. But also this, this action of the diaphragm doing this. The diaphragm also pumps our lymphatic fluid around our body. So this is the main pump in addition to our muscles contracting that removes the waste products from our cells. So if our breathing um, is not primarily with our diaphragm, that pump is not as active. And also this action of the diaphragm is almost massaging our organs right are uh, keeping the energy flowing in in the lower part of our body whether it's our stomach whether it's you know our kidneys all of these organs are compressed and released by the diaphragm going down into the belly so we're giving ourselves an internal massage as well that's keeping everything moving and what i started to say is around our breathing and our emotions and the majority of us find it difficult to breathe in our abdomen because what happens is when we, and you might relate to this, when we don't want to feel something or get upset, and it might be in front of our boss, it might be not screaming at our kids, it might be we don't want to cry, whatever it is, often we, we hold our breath. And in that moment, we kind of stifle the emotion and the emotion kind of dissipates and we're like, oh, okay, I can, I can move on. I, I had a lucky escape, right? But in my experience, what's happening over the long term when we do that is we are um, cutting off that energy. Whereas the emotion is here to, to tell us or indicate something to us and be expressed and move on. And where we use our breath to, to stop and, and suppress that emotional energy, we're actually keeping it in our body somewhere. And when we do this over the long term, the same as when we have the stress response going on, where we continually bite back our emotions, we are going to create some form of dis-ease in the body long term. So that's my deeper work when I work in, with breath work is a lot of the time it's helping people resolve their, some of their emotional stuff. I work with all kinds of things, usually sometimes with health issues, sometimes with um, PTSD, trauma, all of these things that are almost like, you know, the, the, tried everything, nothing has worked. And often I find breath work actually is the thing that can... For me, it's universally applicable, but I just wanted to share that that's the deeper work that I do is a lot of this emotional resolution work, helping people move through things that are stuck in their body because they do manifest in a physical way. So we can, all, in addition to being able to use the breath to, to change our state and, and manage our immune response and our stress response, we can also use the breath to resolve some of the some of the other things that might be from the past that we're carrying. 
we can actually use the breath to resolve that in the same way that we use the breath to squish it we can use the breath to release it and i often like to say breath work in the deeper work that i do is like therapy without having to talk <laughs> which is appealing to a lot of people right mm -hmm. because we don't all want to talk about our problems and share them with the world but when we can sit uh, or lay down and, and do some breath work and actually the breath does the work for us um that you might and you might not even know what your issues are right you might talk about something and you know uh, yeah there's something else hidden somewhere that you don't know so it's in the subconscious <laughs> level <laughs> yeah and that's often or on a somatic what, level right like it goes into the on a somatic level and that's yeah. what we find any any type of breath work when we start to become more aware of our breathing and our body all kinds of weird and wonderful things can happen and often uh, it can bring us an awareness of something like you say that that we're not even aware that we're carrying or holding on to and that might be a thought comes up or it might be a physical sensation that arises in our body that we don't even have a memory for but that we're working through um, and we can use the breath to work through that and, and 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 sometimes understand it if that's necessary for the journey but ultimately integrate it and and make it part of us because often we compartmentalize these experiences that we have and it, it splits our energy off. So for example, if we, if, if we find it difficult to have a healthy response to anger, for example, often we put a lid on the anger, we put a lid on the anger, we put a lid on the anger over and over again. And what happens is somebody comes along and presses the anger button at the wrong time. And you know, that poor person, whoever pressed the button, gets the, the volcano, right? And so breath in that way can also be used to, to remove a little bit of tension at a time rather than having the volcano explode, right? <laughs> and and helping our loved ones who are the, usually the ones who get that, right? <laughs> right. Because because you know it's it's not it's normally not related to them it's related to the stuff that you've been accumulating for you know frustration from work frustration from yeah. other things but if you're not working through it then they're the ones who suffer or you're the one who's to suffer but you know yeah. it's yeah uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a great practice for managing relationships too i found it yeah. to be a very good one at least personally <laughs> and and also i want to say great for kids because kids have this natural ability if you look at a baby if you look at a small child how do they breathe you know they they are like this little buddha and us as adults we tend to um to get limited in our experience we tend to get kind of contracted and stiff and children know how to breathe it's only as they grow older and they get told that their emotions aren't um allowed or they get stifled in some way that we start to develop these breathing behaviors that actually limit our capacity as well to express ourselves and to allow that, like that energy to move through. Somebody say something? Well, you say something? No, the, the kids are a lot less nervous, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a lot more calm, like Buddha. Right, like, yeah. That'd be like yeah. that. <laughs> we, we all need to be more like Buddhas, you know? Yeah, yeah. With our, with our belly breathing. So I'm going to stop talking in a second because I want to lead you guys through some exercises that we're going to do. Um, before we do that, I would love to hear from you. Like, firstly, does this all make sense? Uh, you can give me a thumbs up. Yay. And I would love to hear from you, um, maybe in the chat, because we've got quite a few people on here. Just what would you like from this kind of experience today? So I can just tune into the energy of, of what people are bringing. So whatever you feel like would be beneficial for you right now, it might be some relaxation, it might be some clarity, it might be some peace. Um, just let me know in the chat what, what feels aligned for you right now. Or you can share if there's something going on for you right now, maybe you feel a bit anxious, like whatever is happening, I would love to hear from you in the chat a word or two what you would really like. Everybody looks like they're concentrating. Yeah, I think people are shy about sharing this, but I, I, I'm sure 
there are a lot of different things happening, right? Anxiety yeah. and stress and yeah. uncertainty and, it, and you yeah, know, and it doesn't have to be. You don't need to share what's going on for you um, if that doesn't feel comfortable. But what would you like? Um, what would you like? Okay, we have some people saying we have some. They're all yes. coming in. Manage my stress and my emotions better. Yeah. Uh, make the world a better and safer place for everyone. There you go. Uh, yeah, we're working with magic, so maybe <laughs> would be right. great to hear about how you deal with everyday stress and yeah. um, reset. The reset. world that comes to mind is reset. Yeah, awesome. Thank Those you. Those are some great ones. That. Yeah, really, really great. So the reason I asked that is because every time I do one of these kind of calls, we're, we're really kind of co-creating, relax, unblock, or free emotions. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and there's a, there's a question here privately, so I'll, I'll maybe answer that at the end, Ronan, but thank you for that. It's just asking about holotropic breathing. So maybe we'll just come back to that at the end. Okay. Exercise to help sleep. Okay, yeah, we're gonna cover this. Awesome. Yeah, this is, this is really good. So like I, I was just saying, the reason I asked this is just, there's always a different group of people. We always bring a different energy together. And I like to think of it as, like this kind of global network because we're all here together. We can set some intentions, just really um, coming back to this place of kind of calm that is all within us. And that's what I really want to bring us to today. So hopefully everybody's going to get what they need. Exercise to help sleep or fall back to sleep. Yeah, fab. Okay, so that is exactly what we're going to do. Um, Philippa, there's a question on Facebook. Is chest breathing an emotional related breathing? So chest breathing, um, it can be. What I would say is chest breathing is often a learned response. Particularly if we've had difficulties breathing at some point in time. So things like asthma, panic attacks, often are uh, heavily dominated by chest breathing. And this, is, this muscle, this diaphragm is not being utilized so often we can feel like we're not getting a breath. We're focusing very much on, on our breathing because at times we've had problems breathing and it becomes a vicious cycle almost. And over time, the majority of us, you know, we're in a screen and we're in the electronic devices. When, we are, uh, when we're in our head, we are less and less connected to our physical body. And so our chest but when we're breathing in our chest as well it can often mean that we are very kind of mentally busy a lot of mental chatter and we need to actually bring the energy and the awareness and our attention down into our physical body and so that can be related to from an emotional perspective other things that are perhaps held in the body that feel a bit scary or that we don't want to go there and address so we can kind of, we'll stay more in the chest because when we start breathing and connecting with the body, we can perhaps feel some things that are dissonant and that, that need our attention or that are calling for our attention. So it can be a combination of things in addition to the sympathetic response that I mentioned. So hopefully that helps whoever's listening live on Facebook. Um, you can always respond if you've got any more questions and Bella can pick that up. Are we cool? Super. Uh, when I started doing these breathing exercises, how much time did it take you to concentrate and connect to yourself? So like anything, I'd say this is a process, but what I'm going to teach you today is really, really simple. It's really simple and I'm going to lead you through it now. So I'm going to invite you just to find a comfortable position. We haven't got any more questions for now. We can ask some more questions afterwards, but I really want to get into this while we have the energy. And I'm just, yeah, going to invite you to find a comfortable position. And when you do, just closing your eyes. So you can either have your video on or off, it doesn't matter. Whatever feels comfortable to you. I'm just going to, um, I don't know, Bella, if you could just make sure everybody's muted. Um, just so I don't get any background noise. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. And yeah, just finding a comfortable position. So. We're going to do, I'm going to lead you through a few different exercises so you can just keep your eyes closed during this. Oh, 
all things, just knowing that as you go through this process, it's, it's, a, it's an experience and observation of what's happening. So, as you're here with your eyes closed, I'm just going to invite you to, and I close my eyes to tune in, so in case you open your eyes and look at me and wonder why I've got my eyes closed, that's what's going on. <laughs> and I'm just going to invite you to bring your attention to this moment now. So I've done a lot of talking, and also there were things going on before you arrived here. There are probably things in your mind that you know you've got to do after this. And so just allowing your energy and your focus and attention to come into this moment. Nothing more right now to do other than that. So just being in this moment. We're just going to go a little bit deeper. So I'm going to invite you to, we're going to do breathe in through our nose and we're going to breathe out through our mouth. And we're just going to make a sigh. And as we breathe in through our nose, we're going to raise our shoulders up. And as we breathe out through our mouth, we're just going to relax our shoulders down. And we're going to do this three times. So join me when you're ready, breathing in through the nose, shoulders up. Relaxing the shoulders down, out through the mouth. In through the nose, shoulders up. Out through the mouth, shoulders down. In through the nose, shoulders up. Out through the mouth, shoulders down. And just relaxing the shoulders. Just coming to breathing in and out through the nose for now. If that's available to you. And generally speaking, we want to be breathing day to day in and out through our nose. This has the most, it has filters, the hairs in our nose have filters, and this regulates our system. So day to day, we want to be breathing for the majority of the time through the nose. And so we're going to do a little bit of an awareness practice, very simple now. And I'm going to invite you to place a hand on your chest and place your other hand just below your navel, your belly button on your lower abdomen. And just noticing what it feels like to have your hands on your body. And then just noticing where your breath moves, whether the hand on your chest moves, or whether the hand on your abdomen moves. Maybe it's both. Just bringing awareness to what is happening in your body. Just in this quiet space, just paying attention, breathing gently in and out through the nose. And perhaps it feels easy to breathe. Perhaps it feels a little bit challenging. Perhaps you notice some sensations or heat or cold as you breathe. Just paying attention. And now just bringing both of your hands down into your lower abdomen. Just going to rest them there for a moment. 
And I invite you to bring your awareness to the contact between your feet, if you're sat on a chair, between your feet and the ground. Just feeling that point of contact between your feet and the ground. And if you're sat on the chair, if you're laying down, just noticing also your buttocks heavy on the chair, the weight of your body pressing down, any point of contact that your body has with the ground, just tuning into that point and recognizing that the ground is always here to support you. No matter what is going on, the earth is always here. It's the one constant. You're always grounded and connected to the earth. And so this is just a really useful resource to come back to any times of stress when our mind is getting busy, just coming back to feeling the connection with the ground. Now we're going to bring our awareness to our abdomen. So hopefully you've got a hand or two hands on your lower abdomen, just resting gently. Allowing your body to soften. And we're going to be breathing in and out through the nose gently. And I want you to imagine that there's a tube running down your throat down through your chest and into your abdomen and in your abdomen there's a big balloon there's a big balloon and so when you breathe in the air goes all the way down the tube and it inflates the balloon and as the balloon inflates so does your abdomen inflates in the front and also the sides and the back so like a cylinder all the way around. So as you breathe in, bring your awareness and your focus down into your abdomen, into that balloon. So you breathe in, the balloon inflates. And as you breathe out, the balloon deflates and your abdomen goes back to its normal position. And as you breathe in, the balloon inflates, And as you release the balloon and your abdomen goes back to normal, just notice how this feels. It might feel a little bit strange or different, and that's okay. But we know when our diaphragm is activated because our abdomen is moving. I'm just noticing how that is for you. And so we're going to move on to one of the exercises now. And you can stay with your eyes closed. We're going to keep our hands on our abdomen and we're going to try and just keep our focus on breathing into our belly. Don't worry too much about that. We're going to do an exercise called four, seven, eight. And this is a really good exercise for, for um, before for going to bed for relaxing our nervous system for sleeping and it's called four seven eight because what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to breathe in through our nose for a count of four we're going to hold our breath for a count of seven and we're going to exhale through our mouth for a count of eight and before we do that we're going to take a tongue and we're just going to place it on the roof of our mouth. It's behind our front teeth. And so if you can remember, we're going to keep the tongue up there on the roof of our mouth. If not, don't worry. It's still going to work. 
and we're going to breathe in for four, hold for seven, breathe out through the mouth for eight. And so just joining me when you're ready, just releasing, letting out your last exhale. And we're going to breathe in through the nose for four, two, three, four, hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to breathe out through the mouth for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In through the nose for four, two, three, four. Hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out through the mouth for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In through the nose for four, two, three, four. Hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out through the mouth for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, in through the nose for four, two, three, four. Hold for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And out through the mouth for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just continuing in your own time, in through the nose for four, hold for seven, out through the mouth for eight. And then just coming to the last round of counting, letting go of any counting. And just noticing how you are feeling. Just noticing how you are feeling in your body and also how you're feeling in your state of mind. Just noticing what's happening in your body. Awesome. And you can just stay with that. We're going to do another exercise. Just do this quickly so that you've got another exercise. And this is going to be something called be breath. Be breath. And be breath is a humming breath. So if you want to join me, just finding that comfortable position, if you're not, if you're kind of a bit more awake again, and just finding this place, just closing your eyes again, and I'll share what everybody's been sharing in a moment. The B breath is we breathe in through our nose and we breathe out. And as we breathe out, we make a humming sound. We breathe in and then and we allow this vibration in the back of our throat, into our mouth, whatever feels good. And what this does is it actually activates our vagus nerve, which stimulates our rest relaxation response. So we're going to do this a couple of times. So breathing in through the nose and then humming. So breathe in. Mm. 
Er igen. One more time. And just letting go, just coming back to breathing in and out through the nose. And just noticing how your body feels, just tuning in what sensations or energy is present. Noticing a state of mind. Noticing how you're feeling. And we're going to carry on and do a little bit more. I'm just aware of the time. So if there is anybody, we are up at an hour. So if there is anybody that does need to leave, we just wanted to let you know that we're going to go on for a little bit longer, probably another 15 minutes. And I'm going to give you another couple of exercises. But if you do need to go, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Yeah, just to, just to add, um, there's um, links to both uh, Philippa's page as well as Embodied uh, for you guys to follow and to see what the upcoming webinars are. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end, just in case anyone needs to leave. Can go yeah. Back. Otherwise, you can go back into your little cocoon and close your eyes again. <laughs> and be in this nice little peaceful space. So just noticing that how that exercise was for you. And it's, it's really interesting just to observe how quickly things can change, right? And the quality of what happens when we bring our attention and our awareness to ourselves. Because the world is calling our attention outwards. The most powerful thing that we can do is bring our attention inwards. And so, I'm going to invite you for a little bit of a different breath this time. And this is to give you a little bit of contrast and it's a more energizing breath. It's a similar practice or breath that I use in my practice and you will feel the difference. With the others, we are focusing on making our exhale longer. We're pressing the brake pedal more. With this, we are focusing more on our inhale so we're bringing more energy to the system so it'll be interesting to see how you find this one and we're going to breathe again in and out through the nose and i'm going to invite you if you haven't still got your hands on your abdomen to bring your hands down into your abdomen and breathing in and out through the nose just starting to bring that awareness again to the balloon in your abdomen So as you breathe in, you fill the balloon up. And this time our inhale is going to be longer. So our inhale is two to three times longer than our exhale. We're breathing in more than we're breathing out. And as we breathe in, we're focusing our awareness and our energy on breathing down into our lower abdomen. And then what we do is we breathe in and we let go. And our exhalation is soft and relaxed. Like we're letting go of that balloon and it's just, it's just automatically deflating. And another way of looking at this is like the, the wave coming up the beach and then it crashes onto the beach. So our inhale is the wave coming up. And as we exhale, the wave crashes onto the beach. No effort required. So we breathe in and we let go. We breathe in and we let go. Breathe in, let go. And another layer to this is that we breathe with no pauses. So we breathe in and we let go and we breathe in straight away again. So it's like a like a circle or an infinity 
So breathing constantly with no gaps or pauses. Long inhale, relaxed exhale. 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 And like with this breath, our breath is like medicine. So if it feels a little bit intense for you, you can take less, uh, you can take shallower breaths and slow things down. If you feel like you want to go a little bit deeper, you can breathe deeper and a little bit faster. So breath is like medicine. If you want to take more, you breathe deeper and faster. Breathing in, letting go, staying with this circular breath. In and out through the nose, longer inhale, relaxed exhale. Longer inhale, relaxed exhale. You might feel energy starting to move. You might feel a little bit lightheaded or some tingly fingers, that's normal. Just relaxing it, exhale. As you breathe, just softening and allowing yourself to trust your body. Part of this process is that just getting the mind out of the way. And so we're going to do, I'm going to invite you to do something with me and join me if it feels good for you. If you are in an environment where this is inappropriate or feels uncomfortable, then you don't have to do it at all. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a sound like a chant. So it's really good just to open our expression. And also just move our physical body a little bit to, to shake out any tension that might be here. So <clears throat> normally when I do this, we have a full blown tantrum like a child, but perhaps that might not work for you right now when you're set up. So we're just going to shake out our arms. We're going to maybe tap our feet on the ground, move our head and our shoulders. And we're also going to make a sound at the same time. So it's just going to shake any tension off and allow any tension to come out of our throat. We're gonna do this a couple of times. So just breathing in. Uh, sound and have a little shake out. Uh, beautiful. And again, so breathing in. Uh, Letting go of anything that we don't need. Beautiful. And then just coming back to now, breathing in and out through the nose, just allowing the breath to settle a little bit. Quite a big energy release often when we do that. I feel a lot of energy moving. So just coming back to a more gentle breath now. Bringing the breath into balance, just breathing in and out evenly, in and out through the nose. And letting go of now needing to do anything. So again, just coming to this place of stillness. And just observing what's happening in your body. Observing how that was for you. So observing it in a state of mind now as well. And I'm going to give you one last exercise just while we've got a little bit of time. And this again is another very simple exercise. And it's called box breathing. And the box has four sides of equal length. And so what we're going to do is breathing in and out through the nose. We're going to breathe in for a count of four. Hold our breath for a count of four. We're going to breathe out for a count of four and hold our breath for a count of four. Now I'm going to guide this again. If Four feels like too much for you. You can do three, 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 or two, 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 two. 
but you get the idea even sides with breath holds so just letting go of the last exhale allowing the last exhale to come out and we're going to breathe in through the nose two three four hold the breath two three four out through the nose two three four hold two three four in through the nose two three four hold two three four out through the nose two three four hold two three four in through the nose two three four hold two three four out through the nose two three four hold two three four in through the nose two three four hold two three four out through the nose two three four and hold two three four and just continuing in your own time And you're just coming to the last round, letting go of any counting, and again, just noticing. Just being aware, just being in this moment, nothing to do, nowhere to go. We have everything that we need right in this moment. And so again, this box breath is a really good way of just bringing our system into balance. Four, seven, eight is really good for slowing down, really slowing down. Box breath can be the same. It's also about creating this balance. And so yeah, just being aware of your mind state now, your body, how your body feels. Bring your awareness back into the room where you are and feeling that connection again with your feet on the floor, weight pressing down on the chair. Bring a little bit of movement back into your fingers and toes. And when you're ready, you can just put your arms across yourself and give yourself a little hug we can't hug all of our nearest and dearest and our loved ones right now, but we can give ourselves a hug and then we can send that out to them all across the world. Oh, to everybody in the group here, everybody watching live on Facebook, everybody that might watch the recording of this. And also just sending ourselves a hug for taking the time today to just tune in and look after ourselves. So opening your eyes when you're ready and you can come back, welcome back, back in the room. <laughs> and I would love to know from everybody in the chat box or maybe you even want to come on and share how you're feeling. Jacqueline, great. Even in capitals, that's excellent. Deeply relaxed. Wonderful. Thank you, Karen. Magdalena, relaxed. Yeah. So, and just to say, uh, what I'll do is I'll send um, the details of the practices that we did. I can send them to Bella and she can send out, perhaps to everybody that's here, um, a reminder so they know what we did and how to practice. Yeah, I definitely will do that. And um, there's a, we've shared a Facebook group where I share both the recording of this video as well as whatever the practitioners like Philip are going to share so you can 
uh, you know, take advantage of the free tools and things like that. And also, I know you haven't shared, but you are having, uh, I'm part of it. And we're on Friday, we're starting a journey with Philip of the, the breath, breath work practice. What, how many days of a challenge is it? 11 days. 11 days of challenge. So I'm really excited to join. And if anyone uh, is interested, I will share that information as well on the group. Um, yeah, awesome. I just want to really thank you, Philippa, before, uh, you know, opening up to some questions because, you know, we, we, I, I brought many specialists on board and I, I, you know, I share a lot of trainings to the Embody Wellness Institute, but it's, it's really amazing when uh, we get kind of everything in one, you know, like a, a really simple uh, to the point practice that can really help us uh, do it all, you know, get relaxed, like uh, have the benefits for our health and reconnect our body, mind and spirit all in one and just really feel connected. Uh, so I just really feel grateful for uh, learning that tool from you and being able to share it with everyone here. Thank you, everyone. And um, also just very quickly, um, I want to share with you the upcoming webinars before I open up to questions. Uh, we have many interesting webinars coming up that I wanted to share with you. Uh, we have uh, lots of different practitioners about, you know, that the, they're going to teach us about vibrational frequency, sexuality, uh, healthy eating, sound healing. Uh, there are a number of, of really interesting webinars every Wednesday at um, normally at five. Um, and we have them one week in English and one week in Portuguese. So for those of you that want to practice your languages. What's that? Philippa's there on the 20th. On the twentieth, um, actually, I think I, I I opened the wrong one. Hold on, let me uh, let me get the right one. Twentieth. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. Whoa. I, I have. Her. No, sorry about that. I have the wrong one here. Uh, for some reason, I ended up. Yeah, I, I'm. Oh. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second. Oh, there we go. The there we are. Here we have the the real one. Here we have the um, we have on uh. Oh, acupressure next week uh, no no i'm sorry a hormonal there there we go immunology and uh how to activate your hormonal system next week with angela anna paula uh, will be teaching us on the june 3rd about acupressure and the different points that you know you can activate in your body to relieve stress then we have essential oils mm -hmm. and naturopathy with anna paula the week after and then yoga, acro yoga, and massage with Agustine from Cuba the week after that. And it's going to be a, you know, continuing for as long as we need to, as long as we need to, you know, help people get through this and hopefully even after. What's that on the 27th? What's that? On the 27th of May. On the 27th of May, it's hormonal therapy. So it, uh, yoga moves and some uh, hormonal, like, um, you know, breathing and um, uh, what are they called? Stretching exercises to help us activate our hormonal system to deal with stress, to strengthen our immune system. So, but if you want, you just uh, uh, follow us on the Embody Wellness page. And I always share them every Wednesday. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Philippa, if you have more, uh, you know, a couple of more minutes uh, and people have questions, we can, we can take those or let's yeah. see. So I'm just reading through the comments. We've got a lot of feeling yeah. great. Great, great, great. Um, how many times is it recommended to do the breathing of four, seven, eight and four, 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 four? So that's a great question. Generally, you want to you wanna aim for like four rounds and you can build up from a little bit longer than that, like for a couple of minutes. Just, this is always something that you can experiment with and see how you find it personally. For some people, it's like really fast. Other people, if we're really busy in the mind, it might take a little bit longer to, um, to, to, to bring the energy down. And also, um, you might find actually 478 is quite challenging until you build up a little bit of practice to actually do those retentions or control the exhale for longer. But ultimately what, what we're looking at in, in those exercises, particularly four, seven, eight, is we're making the exhale longer. So anytime that we are under this kind of stress, one of the key things to do is make our exhale longer than our inhale. 
and it starts to bring that stress response down. And that's why four, seven, eight. It could be um, we breathe in for two, out for four, in for three, out for six. The, the same um, applies in that we are activating that brake pedal when we breathe out for longer. So hopefully that makes sense, Lamar, if Lamar's still here. Um, I can't see who's here and who's not, but Lamar's still on Reddit, I think. I have, but, I have a quick question uh, as well. Sure. What's the difference between, you know, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've practiced also breathing with, uh, with yoga, the pranayama. What's the really like the difference between the breathing out and breathing in and uh, having one longer versus the other? What does it do? I know you said that the breathing out is the parasympathetic system and uh, the other one is sympathetic system. Is that, does it have to do with that? So if you're breathing out, are you sort of relaxing more than yeah. energizing yourself? Yeah, so there's, um, if you noticed when we did, so we did the, we did four, seven, eight, and then we did the humming breath, right? Those are two more rela relaxation breaths. And I, I'd be interested to know if anybody wants to share their experience. We've still got a lot of stuff to scroll through. But um, then we did this breath, which was a bigger inhale than an exhale, right? So we were then focused more on our inhale. And this is going to energize our system more than calm it down. So you may have felt that as we're doing it. It's like it's, that's almost like revving the engine. And that's the work that I use when we do this kind of emotional work that I tend to predominantly focus on doing is that we're energizing, we're bringing energy into the system by breathing in for longer. Does that make sense? So anytime we want to bring our energy down, we breathe out for longer. Anytime we want to energize our system, so that can be the equivalent of a shot of caffeine as well, we breathe in more. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, awesome. There's a question here about whether or not this, what, you know, where this practice comes from, whether it's yoga or not. It's a, it's a special school, right, that was developed. You, you can... More about yeah, it. so my, I'm just looking, oh my goodness, we've got 20 comments, um, which is awesome. <laughs> so my original training was with a, a school in the US called the Transformational Breath Foundation. And this is a form of what's called and, and partly demonstrated in that activating breath that we did, the energizing breath. It's called a form of conscious connected breath. And this is where we breathe with no pauses. And there are many different schools that utilize this form of breathing with no pauses. One of them is um, holotropic. Um, there, are, there are numerous different schools and they have, I guess, different aspects, different elements that they perhaps work with or nuance to the practice. Um, in terms of yoga, there is a whole limb of yoga called pranayama, right, which is breathing exercises, which is learning to work with our breath um, and, and moderating it, changing it in many, many different ways. So this is why I say breath work is such a, a broad term. All of these moderations and changes can fall under this banner of breath work. It just really depends how we're intending to use them. Some of them have, like I said, certain attributes of either calming or raising our energy. And we can also combine that with intention. So intention, our direction and our focus is really, really powerful. So we can also combine these. And this is why I asked you, you know, why you guys here is that we can combine that intention of what we want with our breath as well. And that really is when we talk about magic, that really is the magic. Because for me, breath is this multidimensional connection. It connects us to, our, I say, our North Star, who we really are, the divinity that's within us. And it also connects us to our physical body. So it's the bridge. It really is the bridge between, between the two. Um, often people ask me, you know, what's the difference between the breath work that you teach and the breath work of X, Y, and Z foundation? And, and often my response these days is nothing. Like there's no difference because in my experience, breathing, breath work and breathing is the truth. So it always brings you back to the truth. You know, I, well, then you, vi you might vibe with a particular teacher or, or, you know, guide and a particular technique. As long as you are, you know, doing these kinds of practices, you are connecting in with the truth. You're connecting in with 
with your essence and so that for me is is the important thing regardless of the the semantics to, to say of the technique as such if that makes sense um, yeah i i completely agree with you um uh philippa it's uh you know when i when i set up the embodied wellness institute this was about reconnecting kind of the body mind and 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 the spirit or energy you know independent of how you call it and what you think about it right and i think breathing it was kind of the missing element for me because i i i taught it intuitively about the importance of being present in the moment and i called it sensefulness you know like reconnecting with your senses and your body but one of the best ways to do it there are a number of ways of doing that right there are a lot of practices but i think breathing is really a shortcut it really takes you directly to that space where you are all one which is the name of our webinars right all one <laughs> we're reconnecting yeah, body mind spirit. so yeah <laughs> brings us to a full circle <laughs> yeah just check through the comments of what we've got down here yeah um, we have a question you. about your 11 day um challenge of how it's going to be i will share it through the group but if you want to say a couple of words about it yeah sure um so Awesome. I just want to say thank you for everybody to sh for showing up and sharing. That's that's really cool. All um, oh, your comments. Yeah. So this is this is something I haven't done before. I've, I've resisted doing things online, um, and I've learned from my own experience that breathing online, breathwork online, is just as powerful as the as in person. Um, and so I'm yeah I'm offering an 11 day breathwork challenge, which is starting on friday and it's time zone friendly there's nothing that you have to show up for specifically the content is going to be hosted in a private facebook group it's going to run for 11 days and it's going to really be about supporting people to start their own practice and we're going to be working predominantly with the more active breath so what i've taught you here is a lot of relaxation techniques but we're going to start working more actively with this with this connected breath work, which for me is a really really powerful um, powerful breath work that has the capacity to really kind of clear us out and open us up and let go of some of the perhaps the the bigger stresses that we're carrying. And yeah, we're going to be doing that for eleven days. Um, I'm intending to make it super accessible and affordable. So it's like, I think it's 22 pounds, which is probably around $30 ish. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to come into the group, uh, watch any videos, there'll be videos and audios and, and different things going on. And there's already 17 people coming. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in that, I would absolutely love to have you along and really dive a little bit deeper into breath work. It's really about, it's called new normal and really it's recognizing that the world has changed and and so have we and so it's an opportunity to really uh start to realign with what what our life perhaps what we would like to create now in our life from this still point that we find ourselves in and really get our, our inner alignment going again i think you're muted bella <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I think we have another question from Lamar. Lamar, do you want to? You have real raised hand. Uh, ah, up. Awesome. You see it? No, maybe not. Maybe she did it on uh, accidentally. How much? Uh, so Ronan said, "How yep. much time per day? What time?" No. Any any other questions, guys? Because we I think we have um. Yeah, we have two more minutes. We have before. two more minutes. Yeah. I was going to say um, yeah. just how much time per day. Um, the content is going to, the way I work is, is very much that, um, I guess working with, with breath work for the last five years, nothing is like massively pre-planned in that depending on the dynamic and energy of the group will, will determine how the, how the course flows. But in terms of time per day, we're not looking at, we shouldn't be looking at any more than an, than an hour a day. And it's probably going to be half of that, but just in terms of depending on how much you want to get involved in different exercises, um, there will be a, a, an invitation to a regular breathwork practice that you can do at your own, at your own pace in your own time. So yeah. hopefully that answers that question. Yeah. If you have any more questions, you can reach out to me privately as well. I'm happy yeah. to, happy to explain a little bit more. 
Sounds great. Well, I wanted to thank you again, Philippa, and everyone else. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight from all over the world. Yay. I know. <laughs> I know. Despite you know, despite despite the fact that we are in a lockdown, things are pretty busy for everyone. So thanks for choosing to be with us, with with Philippa, uh, with myself, with the Embody Wellness Institute. And please, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be having really. Um, if you join us, you can watch also the the previous. I think we had seven or eight webinars already. You can watch those for, uh, for free, have, get a lot of access to the tools that, that the professionals have provided um, and watch the upcoming webinars. Thanks again, Philippa, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you on Friday or you know, being connected with you. Yeah, and maybe we will do, um, I just had a thought as you were doing it, is maybe we can do one of these in Portuguese. I can That's a good idea. Portuguese. That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that for sure. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. It's so great to see you all. Thanks for tuning in. We've been a little, a little bit longer than we anticipated as well. So I appreciate all <laughs> oh, of your time. That's great. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Don't forget to do your breath work as you had the reminder. <laughs> yeah, four, seven, eight before you go to bed. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah.